I thought I'd have my view changed. I thought maybe Ultimate Edition, Director Scott Snyder will maybe give me something new and different. Now, still pretty much the same. And I want to now explain why specifically this film is a failure and problematic. And I want to just break it down once and for all. You see, I didn't want to do this. Because like for me, when after I saw Batman v Superman, I said to myself that this film is so bad. It is such a mess. So jumbled up and so confused that there is no kind of a director's cut that can change what I saw. Because Blade Runner, for example, the theatrical cut was pretty good. It's just that, okay, that voiceover was a bit awkward, but it was still a very good film that still gained cult status with the theatrical cut. But the director's cut and the ultimate cut made it a true masterpiece and corrected all of the things that the producers forced him to put into the, the theatrical cut. But still, at the theatrical cut was still a very good film. But the ultimate cut just made it an excellent classic masterpiece of a film. So you can't go from a trash film to a good film based on the director's cut. You can't do that. But say, so you know what? So I was never going to watch it. Then I was just going back and forth with some guy on Twitter with regards to the, with the whole Snyder thing coming through uh, with the announcements being made of the Snyder Cut. And this guy said, you know, you keep on complaining about Snyder's films being bad without actually telling us why. And I said to myself, that, you know what? Whenever you criticize some something, you must always come with ammunition and you must always do your research. So I said to myself, you know what? I am going to watch this Ultimate Edition because I don't want someone to say, hey, but that wasn't his true vision. You should watch the Ultimate Edition. Which people say, oh no, this is much better than the, than the theatrical cut. I said, okay, you know what? I will sit down and I will watch the Ultimate Edition of this to try and um, come forth with a um, better researched consensus with regards to this film. So, Ultimate Edition. And I think the best way to do this is just to talk about the issues. So first of all, before you talk about the point of the issues is, does this improve upon the theatrical cut? Not really. Because the scenes that are put there do not negate the issues that I that I had. You see, some people who say they, they enjoyed the ultimate edition obviously didn't have the kind of issues that I had for the theatrical cuts. Because the issues that I had, the ultimate edition did not erase. Because the, there is one major one this was the biggest major one, and I like this is this was the one that completely made the film a complete total crap fest and a total waste of time. But before I get there, so first off, let's even start early. Let, let's start let's start really early because because guys, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go in here. <laughs> You're bringing back Superman. Because Superman Returns was a homage. Bran Singer was in it because he made Superman Returns as a homage to Christopher Reeve. So you were not actually doing anything new. And you picked Brandon Ralph, who was literally a carbon copy of Superman. So Man of Steel was, okay, new theme, new aesthetic, amazing theme, by the way. Amazing soundtrack. Um, and you're now trying to get a new, fresh take on, on, the, on the character. I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of, of Man of Steel. Man of Steel has some very good moments, some very good bits, great, in, great intro. But the film, I just felt, wasn't very good and was not very well structured. Um, but that's to, that's to one side. How do you go from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman? <laughs> and that is one, one of the biggest issues here because a lot of stuff that you see in this film is sort of you assuming that Superman has really already embedded himself into society where in Man of Steel, we hardly saw that. We hardly saw how Superman had sort of ingratiated himself to the wider society. So there is far too much of a leap of faith that has to be done because you need a sequel. 
at you need at least two films so that aha this world now knows what Superman is about so yeah man is still with this guy he's just starting out he's just introducing himself to the world and what does everyone know how to really feel about him and in the very second film he's fighting bad batman and let's keep it real because i don't know what bvs is supposed to be it ain't a superman sequel because if it's a superman sequel superman is had is is sort of a sideshow <laughs> he's an afterthought because really the star of bvs is batman <laughs> you know he's got the best scene He's got the most memorable scenes and the most memorable, and the most memorable mo- mo- moments. And he beats Superman. He beats the living crap out of Superman. So that's already that's the biggest issue. There's a, how do you go from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman? Uh, okay, fine. It is what it is. You are accepted for what it is. This the biggest issue with this film again. The ultimate edition did not really help, which is that what film are you making? Okay, you're making Batman v Superman. Why is Wonder Woman here? <laughs> okay, Wonder Woman is featuring. Why are there Justice League, League, League files? Okay, why is there Doomsday? I'm going to talk about Doomsday separately, but this is a Superman sequel. This is a introduction to batman this is a batman v superman hybrid this is a justice league introduction this is a doomsday storyline you've got three four different storylines in one film so as you're watching it it's unfocused it feels like this is a total mess you're not watching a film you have to choose you have to choose one i think batman v superman is a dumbass concept Fine. If you're gonna do that, stick with. It. Say it's Batman vs Superman. This is what it is, and just stick to that. And that is your film. Don't bring in Wonder Woman. Don't bring in a Justice League. Don't bring in a Doomsday. Let that be the thing, and boom, because you're selling it as Batman v Superman, and then it ends up being a jump off and a springboard for the Justice League. And I'm sorry. That's just too much to shove in. Hence why, of course, it's going to be a three-hour film. But it doesn't need to be a three-hour film. <laughs> it really doesn't need to be a three-hour film. You know, and do you really want to give a three-hour film to a filmmaker like Zack Snyder and a writer like David S. Goyer? Because David S. Goyer is the guy that wrote Blade Trinity. David S. Goyer was the guy who decided that he should input an emitter in Batman Be Begins, this dude. So, because three hour, three hour movies for our films, those long films, that's what you give to a Peter Jackson. That's what you give to a Scorsese. That's what you give to a Spielberg, guys who know how to keep the audience fully engaged in a film that's three. Because for someone to sit down for three, four hours straight, that's a long time. That's a long time. Um. What those pieces of addition doesn't correct is casting. Casting. I can I have my issues with rises, darkness, and so forth. But my God in heaven, the difference between Christian Bill's accent and Ben Affleck, it's it's massive. It's a freaking chasm. We all know who, who Christopher Reeve is, but I'm just I'm just watching Superman and Lois on freaking CW. That cheats out CW. That's Hannah Hodgson, dude. His acting is better than Henry Cavill. I already know that Gal Gadot's acting is horrendous. She's a horrendous actress. Like she's she's it's she's awful. She's ab- she's absolutely awful. You know, Jesse Eisenberg is a decent actor who was just miscast. Because I know what you're trying to a much younger thing you do, but it just seemed it was stupid. It just seemed very it, it seemed very stupid and very awkward and it's like, what's what's going on here? So the casting was off. So, th- so really, those those are the main things of where I, you see, the key thing. Oh, and here's the key because I want to get to Doomsday separately. No, 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 no. Let's bring in Doomsday now because there's another one I want to talk about separately, which is the biggest issue of the film, Doomsday. Why? 
as I'll be real with you, before Doomsday came up, I was like, okay, this isn't great, but okay, I can rock with this. It ain't great, but okay, yeah. So, cause, cause almost as I was watching, I was like, wait, why did I hate? Why did I hate this so much? Then when Doomsday came, I was like, yeah, this was it. <laughs> this was it, you know. Um, she there are two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, so, do do you, that is Superman. That is the that is that is arguably Superman's greatest story. The guy builds to come and kill him. The guy builds to take him down. The death of Superman is one of the best selling comic books in history. And I read it. It's a bloody amazing comic book where he fights Doomsday for the entire comic. <laughs> it's a fight for literally. 200 pages so it is an incredible crazy storyline with a crazy ending that nobody really saw so how do you have a storyline that is so epic to superman i see for me people say oh it's not the real doomsday and so forth i'm sorry he was called doomsday he um lex Luthor presented him as doomsday and he ended up killing superman so yes Zack Snyder and Goye had a Batman introduction, Batman v Superman story, Justice League, Justice League introduction, Wonder Woman introduction, and a Doomsday storyline all in one film. That is psychotic. You have to be a psychopath too. So for Warner Brothers, I don't know who greenlight that. You have to be a psychopath. Because if I believe it, I say, Zack, I'm sorry. You can't do all these things in one. Because... If you want to look at Marvel, they took their time. Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2. Captain America, Captain America 2. We're going to introduce this, make sure that there's guys know about this stuff, and then boom, we'll then have the team up. But it is slow. It's methodical because before there was an Avengers, there was a Captain America film, there were two Iron Man films, and there was a Thor film. You know, we're coming into Batman v Superman. There's... You, which does not say Batman solo film. Does not say one one solo film. And you're just shoving them into a Superman sequel hybrid. It is so irresponsibly psychotic. It's mad. Because, and this blends into my final and my key points here is, this isn't a comic book. This is a film. And there are rules to making a film. You are making stuff for general audiences, not for a minority. And when you're making a film, you must have a beginning, a middle, an end. You must you must tell a story. You must have a narrative. There must be a focus. Even if you're telling several stories at one time, they must all converge to a um, particular idea, to a singular idea that you're still trying to tell. Even if you're telling multiple stories, they must still all converge to a single kind of idea that you're trying to freaking tell. Um, what this was to me was somebody that you're not thinking of making a film. You're just thinking of the DCEU. Let's just present, present this DCEU and do all this kind of stuff and not shove it in there. It's like, no, make a film. <laughs> Let's see a beginning, middle and end. Make a film that has a story. So when you can look about it, aha, this is the story of this film. Not just a bunch of scenes lumped to, together. Not just, oh, false god. Oh, is Superman a real god? Is he a devil, a, a demon? Just extremely haphazard, one-dimensional religious allegory and, allegory and religious analogy in the most childish way possible. I mean, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? So... And this, is, and this is the biggest issue with BVS. And this connects to the whole Snyder thing and my, and my issue with the whole Snyder thing. He's making films for a particular group of people. <laughs> Which, okay, fine. But, for if, but when you're giving this amount of money, huge amounts of money, you can't just make a film for a particular group of people. Specifically when you have someone like Batman and Superman there. These are extremely popular characters. 
Now, I'm not saying that, oh, you must try to please people. But you must make a film that has a story. No, 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 no. This is for the real true fans. This is for the DCEU. This, this is for like all the comic book fans. No, 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 no. Make a film that everyone can get into. The beauty of Iron Man 1 is it's a film. It's a film. It's not a film. Oh, if you read Iron Man issue 116, no, no, no. It's a film. The beauty of Captain America First Avenger, one of my favorite films, is it's a film that has a beginning, middle, and end. It has a narrative. It tells a story. I have never read a Captain America comic, but I watched that. I'm like, man, this is a great film because it's a quality story and it's well made, but it's a good film. I watch BVS, and this is not a good film. It's not a film. It's just a bunch of just images and just stuff shoved towards you. So that is the big... And people ask yourself why WB wants to reboot Superman. Why they want to end Snyder. It's because they realize that, yeah, this failed. BVS should clear a billion. You have two of the most popular characters in history. In history, there are very few characters that are more recognizable, more loved, more popular than Batman and Superman. How do you have a film that has both Batman and Superman and you don't make as you don't you don't you don't approach two, two billion? You should get a billion in your sleep. What and what's the reason for that? Because people have an agenda against Snyder? Because people just hate Snyder? No. So the general audience just so oh, that's like dude, no. It's because the film is bad. And it's not because the ultimate edition wasn't in the cinema, because trust me, you put out that three hour film in the cinema, people will still be like, what the flick, what the freaking, what, what the heck is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, because the general audience either wants to be entertained or wants a good quality film. Transformers is trash. It is trash. But Transformers is good entertainment that I don't like, but it is, is still good entertainment in the sense of, for instance, the fights, the action scenes with Doomsday are horrible. It's, it's freaking horrible. It's stupid. It's like watching a video game movie. As bad as those Transformers films are, though those films are bad, the fight scenes, the action scenes are well done. Because Michael, say anything about Michael Bay, he knows how to frame action scenes in a dynamic way where it's exciting and visceral and i say no the films are the films are crap the films are horrible but the action scenes are well done they are well done but for superman you've got a bad film that's completely confused telling three thousand stories and the big final action scene is crap it's stupid <laughs> it's like this is like a ps2 seca to the 2002 final level boss. So, what I mean, what, what is this? And this is what Snyder fans need to understand is that you're not the general public. You're not the general audience. All because you like this stuff doesn't mean the general audience likes the stuff. And you have to respect that Warner one brothers, we are a business. They don't they're not gonna put 200 million on a major tense pull Batman Superman film and only get back 600 or 700 mil. If they are putting in that money, they're expecting at the very least a bill of 1.5. Because you also have to add in marketing and promotionals as well because it's Batman and Superman. <laughs> you know? So, you have to ask yourselves this, that when you just say, oh, people are against Snyder, we know the, the Snyder versus this is how it is now. Should this film just be made for you guys? Or should this film be made by the general populace? Because you don't own Batman v Superman. I will repeat myself. These are two of the most popular characters in history. Along with obviously Spider-Man. <laughs> Which means that most people on the planet know who Batman and Superman are. Most people on the planet like Batman and Superman. Now, you may be bigger fans of them because you buy the comments and you're more into it, but most guys like 
Superman and Batman because based on their popularity. So <laughs> that's why that you know I look at BVS and the whole Snyder thing is Warner Brothers they took their shot in giving him the reins, giving him the the keys to the King Kingdom, but I think ultimately it was um it was a wrong call. It was a wrong call because I just think here's the thing. I think Warner Brothers felt that he obviously has the visuals and he will definitely have the Comic Con because he definitely has the Comic Con populace. So when I just assume that with the Comic Con support and the support of those hardcore fans, general audiences will come through. But I don't think that they didn't really realize that if you don't make a good film, people won't come back. So they'll come in for the initial first weekend. But what's, see, what gets you to a billion and over are multiple viewings. Oh, this is a good, people don't watch a bad film multiple times. People don't watch a boring film multiple times. They watch a great film multiple times. They watch an entertaining film multiple, multiple times. Um, what's it called? Batman Be Begins? Um, what's 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 it called? Captain America: Civil War, and um, the the first Batman film, Superman One. These are good films that people say I I enjoyed it. I want to go back and watch again. Transformers, crap film, but it's well made entertainment. So that's, so that's the thing. You want to compare Transformers with with this because again, this is a bad film. But Transformers is a, is a bad film. So is this. But why did Transformers make more money than this? Because let's keep it real. Batman and Superman are more popular than Trans Transformers. But Transformers is better made entertainment than this is. So this fails as a film. This fails as well made entertainment. <laughs> so there is no reason for general audiences to come back because it's not a good film. And the entertainment is, is badly made. <laughs> you know, it's not filmed as well. It's not framed as well. It's not put across as well as Bay does in his Transformers. So... There is nothing for guys to come back to. Um, and you know, people can disagree or, or agree or disagree, but at, on a fundamental level, on a fundamental level is you've got to make a good film. You've got to have a story, a clear, concise story. And your story just can't be sound bites. They just can't be speeches. They can't be religious allegories. They can't be um, cheap analogies. You know, like that's what they say in screenwriting: show, don't tell. You know, you've got to embed your your message in a clever, subliminal way into your film, rather than it's been beaten down upon you and and screamed out at you, which is what the, what this film film does, man. So, again, look, I said for the Ultimate Edition, I, I I viewed it and I saw it, and I was like, it's Snyder has his talents. Like again, watching that Batman. Fight scene was amazing. Batman's suit is amazing. Some of the scenes in it are amazing. But Superman is as boring as a freaking doorknob. Um, he is the most unutilized guy. And I just... <laughs> he's like, sorry, keep on. <laughs> what works in a comic book doesn't necessarily work in a film. It doesn't necessarily work in a film. Same thing with like when you say like you know you can't make a film of like Akira. You just can't. It's it's, it's un unfilmable. So when, okay, the Batman with the, his um, massive big robotic suit and so forth, fighting Superman and everything. First of all, I thought that was I thought it was dumb in the comic. In Dark Knight Returns, I thought it, it, it was dumb, but in the comic. They're both old. <laughs> so Swan is old as well. <laughs> so they're both old. So even if I still think it's dumb, you can see that, okay, these are just older men fighting. Perhaps Batman in his older age is perhaps much sharper than Swan in his older age. But just, they're just, it's just robbing me the wrong way of 
Batman just beating Superman and just beating the, the, the crap out of this dude. Because I'm like, Superman came out, if you're a Superman fan, he came out looking like, like a chump. He came out looking like a real chump. Because all he really did was, oh, he stabbed um, Doomsday with that spear. But who got the spear in the first place? It was Batman. Who saved Superman's mother? It was Batman. You know? So who was the guy that actually led Doomsday away and so forth? It was it was so, so really this really Batman was the main guy in this film. <laughs> you know? So it goes back to the whole thing of like, is this a Superman sequel? Or is this a Batman film featuring Superman? You know? So ugh. and even again as well. I'm sorry, Batman's motivation for hitting Superman was stupid. Alfred said to this clown, he's not our enemy. But you're saying that, oh, criminals are like weeds, you know, you 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 pull one out there, another one grows. But that him killing Superman will be his greatest legacy. I'm like, what's this what's what, what, what's this clown talking about? The whole point is of course you can never fully defeat crime, but the whole point is that you are what happens to you when your parents died is that you're a psychopath. Batman, you're a psycho. And you need to be Batman. So this thing of, of fighting crime is like a psychological obsession that you have. You know? And you do it obviously on one angle because you're like, hey man, I want to actually be a protector so that um, what happens to me doesn't happen to another young child. But also as well, you actually enjoy being a bat, dressing as a bat and fighting criminals because you're you're a bit loopy in the head. <laughs> you know? Like, like Batman is a street level character. And what makes Batman interesting and why I like Batman is that he's he's limited. Because and that makes him relatable. It's because he's more re -re relatable. That's what makes him interesting. If now I put this dude fighting freaking Doomsday, Subiros and so forth, I tap out. I'm like, okay, what is this? He's what why is he why is he fighting superman why for what why are you fighting for what reason why is superman what you're, you're supposed to be this smart intelligence like they say he's a genius so through all that intelligence that's the best reason you came up to want to kill superman really so that's my thing then is that you know the Consensus of this whole thing is tell it, tell it, tell it, tell a story. Tell a good story. Everything starts with telling a good story. Forget about appealing to fanboys, appealing to hardcore fans, trying to reference a comic book. If you're making a film, this is not a comic book, this is a film. This is a film. This isn't issue 156 and all that stuff. Because you see, I don't care about you, about how you pay homage to one issue. All I care about is, have you made a good film? With a good story. That is structured well. That has good pacing. That's, you know, systematically you can follow. That is your job as a filmmaker. Okay? Your first part of call as a filmmaker is to make a quality film now people may like it or we don't hate it that's what it is but it's a quality film your job isn't to create this weird hybrid that sets up justice league and this dceu because you have this crazy three four film you know so that's just where people lose me here is that so when i just talk to these snyder calls and the snyder fans and, and so forth i come from film See, that's my love. Yeah, I enjoy comic books, but I enjoy films more. And I respect the craftsmanship and the artistry of film and the discipline of film. Once that thing is on a motion picture out there, I'm not going to critique you as a film. I'm not going to critique you as, well, this is, he paid homage to the comic book here, he paid homage here. Oh, look at that, that's a nice, no, 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 no. I'm like, okay, how does the film start? Okay, what is the plot? How well, is, how well do you tell the plot? How well does the story progress? How well do you pace things? How do you go from scene to scene? How do the scenes inter... 
connects how does the story now weave and go do, do things happen gradually do they happen slow do they happen too too fast how do you now tie all the loose ends to end that and how do you now wrap things up and how do you now end and what kind of um surprises do you spring into the, so i'm look these are all the technicalities you have to look for when you're looking at a film i don't give a f i don't give a damn about you paying homage to some freaking issue 156 no that's a comic book you're making a film now you can respect the source of material and use the source material as inspiration but you're making a film and you have to adhere to the rules of filmmaking not just hey i'm setting up the justice league hey i'm making a doomsday storyline hey i'm making a batman thing hey i'm making a superman thing come on so that's my thing there man you know that's what i can say man comment below Tell me your thoughts. I'm happy to answer any questions, bro. I'm happy to answer any questions. Peace out. Stay true. Much love. Like. Subscribe.